we are so glad that you are here. Seeing some new faces on our Zoom, it even makes us more happy. So thank you for being here and for bringing your whole selves, technical glitches and all. We are all here, flawed and wonderful creations of God. And no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. A couple of announcements. Uh, we have a drive-through candy drop-off today. So uh, if you have been filling your house with more candy than you should or want to, drop it off at the church between 1230 and 1.30 on the Daup Avenue side. So that's the side door um, that's on the actual street and not the alley. So look for uh, members of Christian Education. I think Jean Gordon uh, is going to be there ready to accept your candy. And that's a prelude to next week when we will have a Halloween drive through tunnel. The admission price is a donation to the HCM Food Pantry. We encourage you to bring children, but to dress up yourselves too. Uh, and come through and you can, I've heard you can drive through the tunnel as many times as you want. Uh, and we're going to have people outside the tunnel too. Um, but uh, we hope that you will come and join us in this uh, COVID friendly uh, or maybe COVID enemy. <laughs> anyway, a safe way to celebrate Halloween. Uh, okay. And I want to remind you, we're still having parking lot Bible study at noon. Just let me know by email or Facebook or text or phone or whatever works for you that you're coming. And we are still having happy hour on Zoom. And this week, we actually got it in the bulletin with a link. So check that out. And happy 40th anniversary to Charlie and Pam. That's a fantastic accomplishment. This is Stewardship Month. And we are continuing our theme of the river of life and thinking about the ways that the Holy Spirit works as a nourishing river for us. The stewardship season is twofold. It is a practical exercise to help us have a sense of how we can plan for next year financially as a church. But it is also a spiritual exercise because it is a fruit of the spirit to be generous and to practice giving, because that's one way that we really connect to our generous giving God. This week, you should receive two items of mail if the post office works. One would be a letter from me that should be there tomorrow. And another will be from our stewardship team, and it will contain your paper pledge card. But you can already pledge online. Just go to our website. And there's a little button where you can click pledge and it will open up a virtual version of our pledge card that goes directly to Holly Collins. Uh, it does not pass go with the pastor or anybody else. Your information is safe. Um, so please uh, use that. Even if you want to fill out the paper card, uh, we're gonna have a time that you can turn those in, uh, but you can go ahead and fill out the online thing if that's easier or if you're like me and lose every piece of paper that comes into your house. Next Sunday will be Consecration Sunday, so we will ask you to bring your virtual pledges or your physical pledge cards um, to worship next week. Okay. Let's settle ourselves into a time of prayer. One and all this is the day of the Lord. Let's gather at the river of life that flows even through the internet. Where the river goes, everything will live. Let us pray as we imagine the spirit like a river flowing through our bodies, carrying us to lush gardens and places of plenty. From your sanctuary, your throne, God, flows a mighty river of peace and hope for all God's people. Our journey of brokenness brings us to your wondrous river of life. 
we rejoice at the sight of the healing waters. We bring all our hurts and our hopes, our fears and our faith, our longings and our love. We float them like Japanese lanterns on the waters of your blessing. All praise to you, God, who has drawn us toward healing and community. We are grateful. Amen. Let's join now together in our statement of faith. Our creeds and statements of faith are not tests of faith, but rather they are gifts of the tradition of our ancestors who have given us these words to hang our hopes upon in hard times. Let us give thanks for all who came before us as we say it together. We believe in God, the eternal spirit, who is made known to us in Jesus our brother, and to whose deeds we testify. Calls the worlds into being, creates humankind in the divine image, and sets before us the ways of life and death. God seeks in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. God judges all humanity and all nations by that will of righteousness declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Lord, God has come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death, and reconciling the whole creation to its creator. God bestows upon us the Holy Spirit creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. God calls us into the Church to accept the cause and joy of discipleship. To be servants in the service of the whole human family. To proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil. To share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table to join him in his passion and victory. God promises to all who trust in the gospel, forgiveness of sins, and fullness of grace, courage and struggle for justice and peace, the presence of the Holy Spirit in trial and rejoicing, and, and eternal, eternal life in that kingdom, kingdom which, which has, has no end. end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto God. God. Amen. Amen. We move now to our stewardship testimony, and I am so pleased that Peggy Teagle, who is one of our new-ish members of Emmanuel, is going to offer her reflection on stewardship and the river of life, but she's also a member of our re-envisioning task force, and so she's going to give you an update about that, too. Hi, I'm Peggy Teagle. Many of you don't know me, although you may have seen me up in the choir loft. My husband, Jack, and I have been attending Emmanuel since 2018. We really miss the services, but we're not in any hurry to resume in-person meetings. Lots of people feel the same way, but others are more than ready. In order to do a hybrid service with in-person and video attendees, we have to purchase the right equipment. The council has approved up to $15,000 for impending expenses for PPE, ventilation upgrades, and technology needs. This is more than the budget currently allows. The revisioning task force is encouraging us to support these needs by participating in a fundraiser. We don't know how long PPE will be needed, probably for quite a while. Ventilation upgrades are a long-term improvement, and having more technology capabilities will help bring our church into the 21st century. As many of you have found out this year, other churches have been broadcasting their services for years, both online or on TV. Since things like singing are still not safe to do, in the short run, having modern video equipment will allow us to pre-record special music and other visual components to be shown during the services. It will also be useful for years to come as services can continue to be broadcast online to those who are homebound for whatever reason. 
Jack and I are excited to give both to the reopening fund and the general budget. We are glad to plant ourselves along the riverbank of the Holy Spirit that flows through Emmanuel. On the church website's donation link, you can specify this fund by checking the box for reopening fund. If you mail a check to the church, write reopening fund on the subject line. Please consider going that extra step for the betterment of our church community. Thank you so much, Peggy. You have been a rock for us and we are so grateful. We come now to thinking about our offering and doing our virtual blessing of it. Out of gratitude for the ways that God is present with us, we offer our gifts to help share the presence of God with others. As a church, we give thanks for your faithfulness for keeping this tabernacle of a church going as we continue to be separated from it. You can contribute both to the church and to the reopening fund, they're separate, by going to the church's website and clicking donate. That will take you to the donation page and you can choose a whole host of accounts to give to. The general fund will support Emmanuel's budget and you can scroll down to find the reopening fund to give specifically to that effort. Now, please note, all of that is separate from pledging, which has its own menu item on the website. So I hope that's at least clear as mud. And whether you give in money or in intention or in work or in spirit, we know that God blesses whatever it is that you give and multiplies it with abundance. In this moment, we pause to offer our gifts to the church and to the world. We set them free into the river of God's love and we rejoice together as we sing. Some of you, this is the moment you've been waiting for. Let's gather the animals around. We're gonna do our virtual version of the blessing of the animals. Welcome friends to our virtual blessing of the animals. Like everything else this year, the virtual format makes it harder for some to attend, but much easier for others like our feline friends who can be blessed in their own homes rather than claw us to bits as we put them in cages for a blessing. The pandemic has brought us even closer to our pets. Again, some have found this better than others, but overall their companionship has been critical to our well-being, and so it is appropriate that we give God thanks for them. If you are with your pet, I invite you to put your hand on or near it, whatever it allows, as we pray this blessing. Would you speak your pet's name at the end of this question? By what name do your humans call you? Dear creature, you were created by God, and you are loved and blessed by God. May you and your human family experience joy and companionship together and continue to be a blessing to each other. In the name of our loving creator, savior, and comforter, amen. Hear now this blessing from Jan Richardson, a prayer for the animals. 
God, you who created them and called them good, bless again these creatures who come to us as a blessing. Fashioned of fur or feather or fin, formed of flesh that breathes with your own breath, that you have made from sheer delight, that you have given in dazzling variety. Bless them who curl themselves around our hearts, who twine themselves through our days, who companion us in our labor, who call us to come and play. Bless them who will never be entirely tamed, and so remind us that you love what is wild, that you rejoice in what lives close to the earth, that your heart beats in the heart of these creatures that you have entrusted to our care. Amen. And a prayer for the humans. God, our creator, help us to love all creatures as kin, all animals as partners on earth, all birds as messengers of praise, all minute beings as expressions of your mysterious design, all dogs as barkers of your love, all cats as mysteries reflecting your presence, and all frogs as voices of hope. Amen. We also pause to remember our animal companions who have died and are no longer with us physically. Though they are gone, their memories still wrap themselves around our legs and tug at our heartstrings as though they were leashes. Today we remember Penny, Tanner, Marcus, Buddy, Lissa, Finn, Mercury, Lucy, and Lila. May peace eternal be with them, and may their heavenly food bowls be ever overflowing. Amen. Hey kids, I hope you enjoyed seeing your pets and everybody else's pets in there. And everybody, if you didn't give me those pictures, um, I have a tendency to find pictures because I see all of your animals many, many times on Facebook. So I look for them. Can we hear me? Okay. You can't. Sorry, we're sharing headphones today, so she can't hear me in her own ear. So it's a little bizarro. Um, so I hope you all, I see Miss Jennifer has her puppy too. I didn't get a picture of him, but I, I see it in our little Zoom that she's got hers and she's hugging it. So I hope everybody hugged their little animals because I love my animals. I always have. And one of the reasons why I love animals so much is because they are amazing judge of characters. They somehow know if you're a good person and if you are only there to love them and take care of them. I don't know how animals know this, but they do. They just somehow know that which humans are going to love them and take care of them and pet them and give them lots of food and treats and let them be them. And they know the ones that don't want to and that want to hurt them. And I don't know how they know this. Cats are very good at it. Cats are also very good at knowing that if you are allergic to them, they will love you even extra special because I don't know why they just do for some reason. At least all the cats I ever have have found the one friend that's allergic to cats and gone after that person out of love. They just want you pet it by them for some bizarre craziness. But what I think is fun is that I think their parents might have taught them that, or maybe their humans taught them that, or maybe they're just born that way. They just know like who's good and who they should hang out with and whose lap they should sit on. So I don't know about you, but I know that my parents have always told me to be choosy on who I hang out with and who I call friends and make sure that those people are good people and that make me be a better person and that I make them be a better person. Because that's what real friends do is that we make sure that both of us 
are being the best human that we possibly can be. That if one of us thinks we have a good idea, but it's really not a good idea, the other one says, mm, I don't think that's a good idea. We probably shouldn't do that. And this isn't just something that just parents just decided to make up to like make our life harder or some weird rule. Jesus talked about it too. It goes all the way back. God talked about it. Everybody talked about it because they want us to be surrounded by people that are good and that will make us be the best people that we can be, which I think that's a pretty smart plan, right? And we know who our people are that help us and always make us better and make us think about things a little harder and make sure that we make good choices. And we know that sometimes we have friends that don't do that as much. So it's not that we can't be friends with them. We have to be friends and we have to love and pray for everybody. But sometimes we probably shouldn't just hang out with some people because they don't have our best interest at heart. And this is where animals come in. Animals hang out with you because they absolutely love you and they believe the best in you. I don't know why, but I have always walked into a house with a dog or a cat and those cats and dogs and, and well, in my life, horses, ducks, chickens. Well, no, I didn't have chickens. That's Maddie. Um, donkeys now. They all, they all care for me and they all give me hugs and little nips when I give them food and they're just there for me and they make me feel better. So I'm glad that we do this thing called blessing of the animals because I think they're some of the best uh, maybe not humans, but best animals that we know and best things that God created to make sure that we do the right thing. And I think that's also why your mom and dads and everybody else brings you to church is so that you are surrounded by people who love you and want the best for you and will be good role models and will help you make good choices in your life and will always support you. So if you have time this week, if you could write a letter to somebody that you miss at church, Anybody you miss. It could be one of your friends. It could be somebody that you always see and you haven't seen in a long time. Maybe you just see them now in a little square on the screen before we start church, but somebody that you miss and just write a little letter to let them know that you miss them. It's kind of like when the dog and cat, when you come home and they lick you and they jump on you, it's our way of doing that for our other humans. So if you can, and this goes for all of God's children. So no matter what age you are, you all can do this too, is anybody can write a card and just say, I miss you. And I love you. And I hope one day we are all back together and we are safe together in our church too. So until then, let's pray and thank God for all of our animals and our whole church who helps us stay on the right path. Gracious and loving God, thank you for every two, four-legged, no-legged animal that you have given us and that you have let us take care of and that you've brought into our life. Even the ones that have already passed on, they will always leave a mark on our hearts and they made us better people because they were in our lives. And thank you for everybody in this church, whether we are in this building or scattered across the world. We know that we are looking out, each other is looking out for one another and that we love each other and we want the best for one another. And thank you for taking care of us and keep us going because we know it's gonna get hard. Thank you and amen. Thanks, Samantha. We now have some wonderful special music from a UCC singer songwriter who is also a professor of worship, I believe at Eden Seminary. And uh, his name is Christopher Grundy. And he has a perfect song and video for our scripture today. So I hope you enjoy this. Blessed are those who trust in God. They will be like a tree planted by the water, planted by the water, and sending out its roots by the stream. Blessed are those who trust in God. 
There will be like a tree planted by the water, planted by the water, and sending out its roots by the stream. They will not fear when the heat comes. And their leaves will all stay green in the year of the longest drought. They will still bear their fruit there by the stream, by the stream. Blessed are those who trust in God. They will be like a tree planted by the water, planted by the water, and sending out its roots by the stream. Today we are exploring the psalm from which that song uh, got its inspiration. And this is Psalm 1, and it is the opening psalm in our book of songs in the scripture. So I'm going to invite Mike Schultz to read it. Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, prospers. Not so for the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. May God grant us the clarity and the wisdom to understand his holy word. Mike, I love that prayer. Indeed. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. I have found strength in this psalm many a time. It is one that I thought would be great for our election season. It is one that speaks about taking the higher road, you know, like only hanging out, as Samantha said, with those folks who have your best interests in mind, perhaps, or who uh, make you a better person and finding your strength and your nourishment in God's love and God's law. And that's great. <laughs> I read this again this weekend. And I wanted to throw it across the room. It just reeked of self-righteousness, that suggestion that we always have a choice between good and evil and that it's simple to make that choice. Last night, I lost a cousin to the health effects of an addiction that she fought her whole life. And she's the third in my family in the last 18 months to suffer from that disease. And honestly, I don't wanna hear about 
it being simple to make a choice between sitting with scoffers and evildoers and having wicked people cast into the wind. I, I can't abide that, knowing that each of us has within us the capacity to be on either side of that. Frankly, I want to scoff at this scripture. And it's okay if you do too. But here's what I have learned through seminary and trying to live this public preaching life for 20 years. When you get angry with the scripture, dig deeper. There's meaning buried there. It's like a dousing stick or a divining rod that when it points downward, there's probably a spring under there. But you'll likely have to do some hard work and get a little dirty in the process. So I dug in to this scripture. First thing to notice is that it is, like I said earlier, an opening psalm. It's an introduction. It's an intro that encourages us to sit and be planted next to the stream of God's holy word. It glosses over the hard stuff and hits the high points. You'll find that in all of your beloved hymnals, there is a choice made by the editors of what is the first song. And it's one that is supposed to kind of encompass all of it. In ours, you will find that it is holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And, well, it's in there, I promise. <laughs> and it ends with the Lord bless you and keep you. And all the hard stuff is in the middle. The funerals, the grief songs, the Advent songs of waiting and longing. So if we take that idea that this is the intro to the hymn of the Bible, and we assume that if it's the intro, the word includes all the Psalms that we are about to read. And here's what I can tell you about the Psalms. They ain't all pretty. Sure, there's soaring rhetoric about being a little lower than angels and looking to the hills for help and being guided by God through the valley of the shadow of death. And those images are beautiful and sustaining for our faith. But there are also plenty of Psalms that are full of anger and judgment and scoffing. The most famous and perhaps the most horrible is Psalm 137 which is the lament in Babylon. And we frequently read and talk about the beginning of this song. This is the one that is, how can we sing a new song in a strange land? It is about being in exile. The passage that most people don't read is that the last verse of that ends by asking God to dash the Babylonians' babies' heads against a rock. It doesn't even end on a high note in that song. But the Psalms are a book of emotion. They are a book that spans the gamut of all of life's ups and downs. And so if that is the holy word, as uncomfortable as it may be, the holy word that goes from joy to despair, to anger, to judgment, to rejoicing, what does it mean to be planted by that river? The river that is sometimes beautiful and peaceful and full of nutrients. And the river that those of us who live near the Ohio know sometimes floods and destroys all that we've built. You can see why it might be appealing to go sit with the scoffers. But God's holy word, the Torah. It's important to know that's not just the commandments. It's not just the do this or do that and if you don't, you are the wicked, and if you do, you are the good. God's whole Torah, God's whole law is about being in covenant. And if you've ever been in a covenant, you know it's not always pretty. It's a binding together with the assumption that 
things will get rough. Examples might be marriage or job contracts or church membership. It's choosing to be lashed like a log to all the other logs in order to make a raft that will get you out and through on rough seas because you need each other to survive. Not necessarily because it feels good all the time. And sometimes it does feel good. And if it never feels good, then maybe that's not a healthy covenant. But for every covenant, rest assured that there will be hard times and that the covenant is there to hold you together in the midst of them. So the song that encourages us to be planted by the river of God's holy love and holy law is to suggest that when the going is rough, we dig deeper. We trust because we are in covenant with this God that there is more love when we dig ourselves in and root ourselves in God's love. There's a spring under there that flows from that river of life. There is nourishment for making fruit of God's love. For me and this song, that spring came when it helped me have language to talk about pain, to talk about the complexity of the walk of faith and how angry I feel when people try to simplify it. And to remember that even in that anger, I am deepening my relationship with God because I'm being honest. I'm digging deeper. I'm showing my vulnerability, which is a sign of trust. When people are grieving, we pastors tend to remind them that it's okay to be angry, that God can take it. What's under that is a trust in the covenant of God, that there's nowhere you can go, even the land of the scoffers, that is away from God's love. But it is also a trust that planting yourself by the river of God's love, getting as close as you can to that spring it means to be so rooted that you can give God the good and the bad and trust that God can turn it into nourishment and fruit. Doesn't mean you have to be good all the time, whatever good means. It means you have to be real, to bring your whole self and to be rooted in it. I laughed a bit as we blessed our animals today because it could be easy to read this psalm as sort of an indictment against cats, the famous scoffers. Don't sit with the scoffers, but come by the water, the dog's territory, right? But I think we need to be both the dogs and the cats. Like the dogs, we seek joy, we rejoice in nature, we drink from the river of life, we delight in the cuddles and love and the joy of eating and sleeping. But there are times that we have to be cats too, to turn away and rest when we need it, to not worry about what other people might say or what bang just happened outside of our church. <laughs> to trust that God will be there when we need God, even if we aren't always the perfect companion and then to purr and cuddle when we can. You know, we're talking about stewardship this week. And as you pledge this week, as you and your family, including any children in your house, talk together about what it means to make a commitment to a place like this, to a people like this, which is what it really is. I encourage you to think about covenant about how we take this covenant of church membership seriously. Things are not always smooth. Choices are not always easy. We're not always going to know what the right thing to do is, which way is the way of the wicked and which way is the way of the wise. But we know that we are planted next to each other. And that means that in hard times, we drink of the same water and we remember our love for one another. And we trust that if we keep digging deeper, planting our roots 
in God's law and love, that God will nourish us again. Thank you for your faithfulness to this covenant. I'm grateful to be in it with you. One more thing about this psalm. It's, it's not clear in every translation of this psalm, but that word, be planted by the water, is actually be transplanted or replanted. And the hope I see in that little translation is that this is not a one and done, but it is a continual replanting. It's a continual rooting and digging and working to be closer to that river of life. We may sit with the scoffers and the skeptics today. We may complain and use that kind of sarcasm that is meant to burn holes in the people that we're angry with. But there is still time to be replanted. God is yet still at work, still in covenant with us, calling us forth to the water that brings out our best fruit. We trust that just like the beginning of the Psalms, invites us to dwell in the depth of the God-enriched soil. That last psalm, 150, shouts praises to God for God's faithfulness. Covenant means trusting that even though the middle is messy, in the end it's worth it, and in the end, love is abundant. I invite you now to a time of prayer where we join together with all those with whom we have covenanted to be in relationship. And we offer our prayers, our needs, our vulnerability, our truth with one another. If you have specific prayer concerns that you would like to lift up, I invite you to use them or use the chat to put them in. Let us move into this time of prayer. We stand at the edge of your river, God, some close to the source, some far from it, some wading with confidence into the waters of your blessing, some worried that the current might be too overwhelming, all coming, seeking grace, strength, and love. We pray today for all those we love in nursing and senior facilities, including Jane, Mary Ellen, Betty, Florence, Julia, Bill, and Gail. We pray for Steve and his recent health issues, for Bud and Betty as they are recovering. We pray for the Emmanuel pastors and staff for the Gibsons kitties who were missed in the video, but loved in the hearts of the Gibsons and in uh, God's heart for Ricky, especially for Florence, for Uncle Jimmy and Bob, for Aunt Bobby Jean, for Faye's family. We pray for those who are stuck in nursing homes and prisons and essential jobs and financial institutions and financial impossibilities. For all those who grieve. For all those who are sick physically, mentally, and spiritually. For those who are separated from loved ones, feeling alone and isolated. For our leaders that they may come together with plans that will help us all. And for all those things that are in our hearts but not yet ready for public words, we hold them in the water of your love. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ who taught us to plant ourselves by the river of life with this prayer, praying to our creator, our mother, and our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as you prepare to move on in whatever your day has for you, I offer you this benediction. Go in peace. And may the Lord who gave water to his people in the wilderness pour out upon you the fullness of blessings. May your faith be grounded on the rock which cannot move and your love be as bountiful as the love which sustains you each and every day. In the name of the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.